Hey everyone, Chris here from Varsity Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Siege School. Today's topic is covering one of the most important gadgets in the game, and that is barbed wire. A lot of people last week really enjoyed the game show format, so I'm going to try to replicate that in today's video. First, I'm going to cover a lot of information that I want to talk about, and then at the end I'll ask a couple questions. And at the very end, I'll assign a rank based on how many questions you got right. Since this series is aimed at beginners and people who just want to learn more, I am going to talk a little bit about the basics of barbed wire and then move on to more advanced things. Barbed wire is a defender's gadget that can only be equipped on 10 of the 15 defenders. Those defenders being Bandit, Caveta, Doc, Echo, Frost, Jaeger, Capcan, Pulse, Smoke, and Tachanka. After I go through the basics, I'll talk about which operators are best to have barbed wire on and which other ones are situational and which ones shouldn't have it at all. The primary reason why barbed wire is considered so powerful is because it only affects attackers. Barbed wire slows an attacker's movement speed, shakes their aim a little bit, and makes a lot of noise. And on top of that, it also affects drones by slowing them down as they drive through the barbed wire, making it harder to escape defenders. Barbed wire is primarily used on objective doors and choke points in order to prevent attackers from pushing through so easily. It is also used as a sound indicator as attackers make a lot of noise while moving through it. What this means is that you can put barbed wire on another side of a wall, and then once you hear the rustling of the barbed wire, you are able to shoot the person or know where they are. And on top of all of that, it is just very useful for preventing attackers from pushing the objective at the last second. It is also very beneficial for defenders, as the attacker is pretty much a sitting duck when they are inside barbed wire. Barbed wire makes the attackers rethink of how they want to push an objective and where they want to go through. If one hallway is completely barbed wired off, they will most likely choose a different route, as they can't expect to destroy everything. The only downside that the gadget has is that defenders also make noise and move the barbed wire as they're going through it. So that's pretty much it for how the gadget works against attackers and for defenders. So like I said before, we're going to organize into three different tiers. One being operators that should always carry barbed wire no matter what. Two being operators that should carry barbed wire sometimes depending on the map and objective. And three being operators that should never have barbed wire at all. Alright, for tier 1, there are only three operators that should always have barbed wire. Those being Bandit, Doc, and Jaeger. Bandit's alternative gadget is a C4. C4s for a long time were incredibly powerful and considered one of the best gadgets because they destroyed shields like crazy. But times have changed and now C4 is almost ineffective against shields. And since Bandit's device does not help him at all at getting C4 kills, it is not at all necessary that he carry one. And on top of all of that, Bandit's gadget even combos with barbed wire. Although it's not advised to use bandit batteries on barbed wire, there are very few situations where it works, and overall it is much more compatible than a C4. Now Doc and Jaeger have the same alternative gadget, which is a deployable shield. Now for a lot of beginners, they think the deployable shield is one of the best items in the game, and they are wrong. The deployable shield is a pretty crap gadget on the overall simply because once the enemy knows where you are, you pretty much have to abandon your post and leave your deployable shield. Once you abandon it, it has absolutely no utility at all and is just a wasted gadget. But with barbed wire, you can leave it anywhere and you don't have to worry about them finding it. They are the ones that have to worry about barbed wire and push through it, whereas you can just use it as a way to know where they're coming from. So it doesn't matter if they find out where you are, you can change locations and still use your gadget. The only time you'd ever want to use a deployable shield on these operators is if no one else has brought one and you need one for some specific strategy. For the overall principle though, these operators should always bring barbed wire. Right, now we're going to move on to the second tier of operators. These are operators that can either use barbed wire or their alternative gadget. Either or is a viable option depending on the situation. These operators include Caveta, Echo, Frost, and Smoke. I'm going to start off by talking about Caveta. Her alternative gadget to barbed wire is impact grenades. I personally believe that Caveta is much more viable when she has impact grenades as she can use them to make rotation holes to either flank the enemy more conveniently or use them to escape if she's being chased. However, there is a case to use barbed wire with her. When roaming offsite, you can use barbed wire at other entry choke points to know when an enemy is going through there. As they're moving through the barbed wire, they're very vulnerable, which makes it very easy to get a kill or to down them and get an interrogation. However, keep in mind that an attacker is going to be very suspicious if they're pushing through a door that's way off site and they see barbed wire at the entrance. Overall, I think impact grenades are way too beneficial for Kevita to choose barbed wire, but it more depends on your playstyle. If you want to set traps and then interrogate people, barbed wire is the way to go. If you want to be able to move around the map very easily and flank a lot, then impact grenades are much more useful. Now, next two operators I'm going to talk about at the same time is Echo and Frost. Both of them have deployable shield as their alternative gadget to barbed wire, and although I just went on a huge rant with Doc and Jaeger about why deployable shield is bad, for these two it can actually work. 
The reason being is because their gadgets combo with the deployable shield pretty well. When it comes to Echo, you want to be safe while you're on your drone, the deployable shield can do that. It can block bullets if you're sitting close to objective and have it facing an obvious window that they're going to push or a different doorway. As for Frost, the shield combos pretty well with the trap because when an operator vaults over the shield, it is very hard to destroy the Frost trap before you get trapped. As well, the Frost trap is just the right length of the shield that is almost perfectly hidden behind it. If you have it set up just perfectly, it is very difficult for an attacker to shoot your Frost trap before vaulting over the shield. But at the same time, when it comes to callouts and trying to prevent the enemies from pushing, barbed wire is again much more useful. So for these two operators, I'd say definitely make your own choice as there's no right answer, but each of their gadgets work very well in different situations. Alright, now the last operator I'm going to talk about for tier 2 is Smoke. His alternative gadget is Impact Grenades. Now the general kit used on Smoke is a shotgun comboed with SMG-11. Because of this, I find that barbed wire is more useful because you don't really need impact holes when you can just make those holes using a shotgun. It really does not take that many bullets to destroy the wall as much as an impact would, and on the overall, you're really not going to be using your shotgun that much as smoke. Most smoke players will primarily use the SMG-11 for all of their engagements, and only use a shotgun in very close quarters fights at the last second. He waits until the last 30 seconds or so and then pops off smokes to deny entry into the objective for the attackers. Comboing this with the barbed wire can be very effective as they're not going to be able to escape the smoke if they're stuck inside of the barbed wire. So while impacts have their place, I still think barbed wire is overall more beneficial and much easier to combo with his smoke canisters. Alright, and now here's last tier, operators who should never bring barbed wire. These include Capcan, Pulse, and Tachanka. But on the overall, Tachanka should be in his own tier, just operators you shouldn't pick in general, so you really don't have to worry about him. So the alternative gadget for Capcan and Pulse is a C4. For Pulse, it's pretty easy to understand why C4 is much better than barbed wire, and it's because with his cardiac sensor, he can tell where enemies are, and then use the C4 to blow them up through the floor or through a wall. With this deadly combo, there really is no logical reason why you should run barbed wire unless no one else on your team is bringing it and you desperately need some. Now for Capcan, it's a bit more finicky. His gadget doesn't combo well at all with barbed wire because as soon as an operator breaks through the door and if they hit the capcan trap, the explosion will destroy your barbed wire. So there really is no point in bringing a gadget that cancels out with your unique ability. So for this it just makes much more sense to bring a C4 and use it to try to get a kill or use it to destroy walls on site. Alright, now that is it for the informational portion of the episode. It ran a little long but I did just want to make sure to get all the information that I knew out there because a lot of people have been telling me that they really enjoy the informational aspect of the show and learning from it. But now we're going to move on to the more fun segment, which is the quiz show. This is going to be just like last time, except for not everything's going to be scenarios. Some of them are just going to be straight up questions about information that wasn't necessarily covered in this video. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to post ranks at the end depending on how many questions you got right. And now that we have that covered, let's get into the questions. Here's the first question. Does stacking multiple barbed wire have a greater effect on attacker's movement speed? This is just a simple yes or no question, and I'll give you guys 10 seconds on the clock to think about it. And go. Alright, time's up. Now the answer is no. Stacking barbed wire on top of each other has no effect on the attacker. I ran a test on this just to make sure, and as you can see with number 3 and number 1, they take the exact same amount of time to go through the barbed wire. Number 2 is inconsistent because the test subject decided to not sprint at the beginning and just walk on through, but the other two he was sprinting and it made it through in the exact same amount of time. Alright, moving on to the second question. This one should be very easy for a lot of you. But like I said at the beginning of the video, this series is more focused on people who don't know a whole lot about the game and are trying to learn the basics as well as some more advanced techniques. Anyways, here's the question. Who has the most barbed wire in the game? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Alright, time's up, and the answer is Bandit. This is something that I didn't mention at the beginning when I was talking about why Bandit must always bring barbed wire, because I wanted to make it a question later on, but he is the only operator in the entire game to have three barbed wire. This was also somewhat of a trick question, because you used to be able to go GSG9 recruit on defense, and he would be able to bring three barbed wire as well as a nitro cell. But a couple of patches ago, they removed that. So now the only person in the entire game who has three barbed wire is Bandit. Alright, here's the third question. When placing barbed wire at the objective, do you place it inside the door or outside? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. All 
All right, time's up, and the answer is inside the door. So you can argue both sides, and they each have their merits, but on the overall, what you're going to want is for the attacker to try to push in and then be affected by the barbed wire. Most people put barbed wire outside of the door because they believe then when the person comes to try to strafe through the door and peek the defenders inside the site, they're going to be slowed by the barbed wire, and then you have a chance to shoot them. While this is a valid point, many competent players will know to destroy the barbed wire before even trying to peek. Not many people are going to be peeking inside the objective site while sitting inside barbed wire. It just doesn't make sense. So this is why you should always prioritize putting barbed wire inside first and then put it outside so you can hear them pushing. There is a common tactic of putting barbed wire outside and waiting for the attackers to start meleeing it to destroy it. Once they start meleeing it, the defender pushes out and kills them. That is a good tactic, but it is not always 100% reliable. Meanwhile, putting barbed wire inside makes it very hard for the attackers to destroy it without an ash charge or grenade. Then it forces them to sit in barbed wire while they're pushing in at the last possible second. This gives you a huge advantage as they're going to be very slow and have a difficult time aiming for you while you have a very easy time to pick them off. Alright, now here's the final question for the quiz. I decided to go with a scenario for this one. Here's a scenario. You're the last attacker. There's only one defender left. You don't know where the defender is other than that they are on site. The site that you're attacking is master bedroom, secure area, on house. You have no drones and you have no callouts from your teammates. You also can't hear anything in-game because your uncle is deadlifting the room over while listening to the Latvian national anthem. So where do you aim? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Alright, time's up. And the answer is... You aim at the left towards the bathroom entrance. For those of you who don't understand why, if you go back and watch the footage during the 10 seconds, you can see the barbed wire moving on the left side of the screen. This is something important that I always try to tell people because not everyone knows, and also something I mentioned at the very beginning of the video is that the fenders also move the barbed wire. So whenever you're not sure where someone is, just check the barbed wire really quickly, it only takes like half a second to look. If you see it moving at all, that means that they're there and you can just focus your attention on that location. All right, everyone, that concludes today's episode of Siege School. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully you learned something new. As promised before, here are the ranks based on how many questions you could have gotten right. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below what rank you got. I'm kind of curious to see how you guys do on these tests. And I just want to reiterate, as I say with almost everything, these answers are not ironclad. They're not the only possible answer for everything. Everything in this game is situational. There's never one right answer. I just try to give a general overview of what could happen and the best course of action without getting too far into it. And also before I finish the video, I just want to quickly plug my Twitch channel. I stream there every single day starting at noon, and I only stream Siege. I'm going to be live today and playing ranked throughout the entire stream. If you want to watch, make sure to follow by using the link on the screen or in the description below. And if you really enjoy this series and even the streams, consider subscribing on Twitch. It's a good way to financially support the channel without costing too much money. But anyways, that's enough self-plugs for me. That is it for today, guys, and I'll see you guys next week in the next episode of Siege School. Take care.